Hey everyone, and thank you for watching today's YouTube video. It is springtime. So I have been so busy. I'm not traveling right now because I'm here at home uh, like a normal person. And um, I've been super busy at the farm. We have like, how many, 27 chicks in the uh, basement right now brooding in their brooders ready to grow and get big enough to go out to the farm. We have 20 guinea hens in the mail right now on their way here from California. Um, I just drove to Georgia yesterday to pick up two uh, satin angora bunnies to start our bunny farm colony family. I don't know what they're called, rabbitry maybe. Um, and so we've been totally busy. And um, But photography, it's really been a challenge and really been exciting for me to be able to figure out, all right, I'm not traveling, so there's nothing specific like really obvious that I can show somebody um, about pic taking pictures at a certain location. So it's been really fun to think about what do I want to say in my YouTube videos lately. And um, I really started seriously getting into photography about a year and a half ago. And I took a bunch of classes online through Craftsy. I started following all my photography heroes on YouTube. And, uh, and then obviously a few months ago, started my own YouTube channel. So when I was learning, I was like, well, what kind of video would I want to see then? Um, so I thought today I would talk about Aperture. What is Aperture? And uh, we'll talk about some concepts, get some real life um, practice. And so yeah, let's uh, talk about Aperture, shall we? Okay, you guys, it's time for some school. Let's figure this out. Okay, so a shutter is what opens and closes to let the light in to expose on the sensor to take the picture. So um, it's this little thing. It's got these little doors, and they open and close. Okay, if your aperture is small, there's the opening. So that's all the light's going to get in. And the uh, F stop is what that's called. So that would be like F22. All right, so a little bit of light can get in at one time. If your aperture is bigger, let's draw these little things, because that opened. That would be F, mm, let's see, two. All right, I didn't make up this number. I just follow the rules, okay? The smaller the number of the F stop, the bigger and wider the uh, shutter is going to open. So more light can get in at one time. What is that going to affect? Well, that's going to affect your shutter speed. So um, just imagine like this is a little faucet, right? Here's your wall. Here's a bigger faucet. Okay. So these are going to represent our aperture and uh, the water is going to represent the amount of light coming in. So you have, if you have a cup, Hopefully the same cup, if I could do that, on both sides, it's nearly the same. Okay, so as the water comes in, you want to fill the cup up to the top, and it's going to take a certain amount of time for this one to do that, because it's just trickling in. If the big, huge aperture, all this water, it's going to like fill the top super fast, because it's open wider. So you're going to have the same exposure, so if this cup is perfect exposure, uh, it's going to take less time to fill this one than this one. But this one, you're getting time to uh, to see your mountain in the background and your tree in the foreground and your little person in the super front, and middle ground, all this kind of stuff. So everything has a, more of a time to get in focus than this one. It's going to be kind of hazy, kind of hazy and blurry. And then here is your person in the middle. So... Not exactly scientific how it works, but the bigger the aperture, the quicker the light's going to come in to your image, but that also kind of it uh, makes a shallower depth of field or a uh, range of focus, if you will. So um, you get the things in the background are more fuzzy, and the foreground might even be more fuzzy, and you just get a shallower depth of field. This, it, the shutter is open longer, so it gives more of a chance to see... There's some snow in our mountain. Uh, give uh, gives us a chance to get more in the image in focus. Okay, weird, brief, but let's see what that looks like in the real world. Um, let's go grab some chickens and head outside. 
perfectly normal thing to say, you guys. Okay, we'll see you outside. Okay, so you may see someone in the background wishing he could get one of these little chicks, but you gotta stay over there, Jarvis. Okay, we have our chicks. Here are little babies. Here are little babies. All right. Um, these two are going to be our subject for the day. So what I'm gonna be doing, I have my uh, 50 millimeter on here, and I'm uh, going to set it to aperture priority, so I don't have to worry about anything else, um, but I will tell you what's changing. I have it set to ISO 400, because it's a little cloudy and overcast. It's no longer a beautiful spring day like it was earlier. But what we're gonna start off with is the aperture open as small as it can be. So on this lens, it's F16. And, um, Jarvis. And so that's gonna get pretty much a good amount of the image in focus at one time. Um, so let me turn this on. Gotta scoot back a little bit because these chicks are pretty close because they want to be with their uh, their chicken daddy, which that's me, chicken daddy. Okay, so these little chicks are not um, staying where I, I told them to stay because they're not very smart. Uh, but what I did, I quickly took three shots and I will explain what these shots are doing. All right, so this first one uh, is F16 and it took a little longer for the image to expose properly. So it was at a 13th of a second. So that allowed more of the image to be in focus. You could see the bricks in the background, the stone wall. You can see some of the foreground leaves a little bit clearer. Depending on your lens, it's not gonna be perfectly in, in focus, but you're gonna be able to make out a lot more of the shapes. Uh, the second one here, is f5 so that's a you know it's a little better a little more open than f16 for sure and uh, that one you can start to blur the background you can still pretty much see what it is um, but it's a little more blurred so it's a little more artistic so it puts a little bit more creative license in your hand as a photographer all right so this last one is f1.4 and since the background is so close to us you can still kind of see what that it's a stone wall but it really blurs it a lot more and the shutter speed was super quick uh less than a thousandth of a second so that is really quick so that's really going to freeze the motion a lot more as well and um, you can see even these chicks they're not they're not both totally in focus the depth of field is so shallow that even the chicks as close as they were weren't perfectly in focus together. So um, that one, you really are completely in control of what people are seeing in your image because quite frankly, everything else might be out of focus. So you're like, you're just gonna look at this chick, nothing else, you're welcome. That is Aperture. I hope this video helps you guys out a little bit, kind of understanding Aperture of how I see it in my brain and my heart. Um, if you liked this video, like, subscribe, comment, all that. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. So you're in a hurry Well you better calm down Like